Everyone familiar with this new meme? Well, for those of you unfamiliar with the new meme format, not only is there an interesting story behind the meme's creation, but there's also an interesting story behind the elements which were used to make it. So in my first foray into true meme breakdown culture, let's begin. The Day of Dawn at the Door meme, or Cow at the Door as it has also been referred, is a meme format which originated in August of 2020, and is therefore still circulating with new and continuously derivative versions making use of the format. The principal meme, as you can see, is an absolutely blurst black and white image of an Intellidont looking through the security camera of a doorbell. The meme was put together by the very talented Luigi, or Geeky Dino, on Twitter. Luigi is a science writer and paleo artist who just so happened to make a blurst enough image to propel his meme into mainstream consciousness. To do this, he photoshopped this image of the front view of a life-sized model of the Intellidont Deodon. Into this background, a still taken from this video, someone took of their security cam as a giant huntsman spider unintentionally rings their doorbell. Plenty other variations on this theme have been made, from further compounding blurstness to using it as a reaction image or reference image to certain situations or stereotypes. Of course, I wouldn't drag you all here for just an explanation of a meme. That's what Lessons in Meme Culture has already done for you. Unfortunately, he got a few things incorrect, but of course he did. He doesn't specialize in the subject of biology and paleontology, and appropriately filled in the gaps in his knowledge with the often very helpful Wikipedia. The meme itself is only part of the story. A more interesting story lies in the origin and current state of affairs of the Deodon statue itself. Within the dark, musty depths of the collections at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History, stored away in the basement among hundreds of fossils yet to be fully researched, is a relatively small model statue of a pig-like animal, which is labeled Dinahyas. This model, known as the Hyas, not only represents what must have been a terrifying animal to meet in person, but also a terrifying facade which beckons you forth. You want to look away, but its soulful eyes, filled with mourn or concern, wraps your attention. There's no way you're getting out of the basement's menagerie of forgotten monsters without shivers down your spine and a haunting feeling of being watched. Even after you've passed by good ol' Hyas. How did such a bizarre reconstruction become part of the museum's collection? It's so old, no one currently working at the museum knew or knew people who knew, which sparked a small investigation into the archives. This model of Dinah Hyas was made by artist Theodore Mills in the late 1800s. Mills, a graduated student of the Munich Royal Academy of Fine Arts, was employed by the Smithsonian and other institutions and eventually by the Carnegie Institute in 1898. He was the in-house paleoartist of the vertebrate paleontology department and was put to work producing many models of prehistoric beasts to populate the exhibit halls. As just one of his models, the Dinahyas was completed in 1909. A mold was produced of the sculpture and a few copies were made, all of which now reside in the Carnegie Museum. As a complete, but still super interesting aside, early in his career, Theodore Mills assisted his father, Clark Mills, in fabricating a life cast of US President Abraham Lincoln's face. This cast was completed a whole 60 days prior to Lincoln's assassination in 1865. So why, of all prehistoric critters which could be made into a lifelike replica of cursed imagery, does the Carnegie Museum have a Dinahyas? The Carnegie Museum of Natural History is also home to one of the best preserved and most complete skeletons of the enormous Intellidont. It was found in 1905 by Carnegie Museum field collector T.F. Olcott in Agate Springs Fossil Quarry in the northwestern corner of Nebraska, a very rich fossil locality replete with ancient horses, pony-sized rhinos, bear dogs, gazelle-like camelids, land beavers, and gorilla sloth horses. Later in 1905, the near-complete specimen of the Intellidont was given a new name and considered a new critter, Dinahyas hollandi. This Intellidont joined another, Deodon Shoshonensis. These beasts were omnivorous, with teeth suited to mashing up roots and tubers, and crunching through vegetation, as well as pulverizing bone and slicing through flesh. These giant forms of Intellidonts stood at a max of 6 feet, or 2 meters tall, at the shoulder. 
They roamed the American West between 29 and 19 million years ago, during the late Oligocene and early Miocene epochs, along with other groups which gave rise to many we see today, like horses, llamas, and cats. Shortly after the discovery of the near-complete Dinahyas skeleton, it was brought back to the Carnegie and cleaned and prepared for exhibition. It is assumed the Hyas statue was meant to accompany the skeleton to give museum guests a gruesome image of what kind of beast it used to be. No one knows how long it remained on display, or if it ever made it that far. I've used the names Dinahyas and Deodon interchangeably throughout this video, but the truth is, the only name which is currently valid is Deodon. In the 1990s, it was found the bones of Dinahyas and Deodon were too similar to one another for them to be considered different critters. Now, only Deodon remains, as that was the first name used. To this day, the remarkable specimen which the Hyas is based on remains on display at the museum. If you stay long enough, perhaps the mournful visage of the Hyas might make an appearance. Subscribe to consume some delicious contento. Trash the like button, scrape out a comment, and blast the notification bell just so you're in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. A very special thanks to my patrons Dinosaur, Natty Cat, Ed Peretz, Steve Bradshaw, Thea Svensson, Jacob Spencer, Dana Manchester, Clayton Maxfield, Antron. If you'd like to support my channel and receive some extra content, pledge to my Patreon at any tier you want.